During each person's lifetime, certain days are etched indelibly in the mind, never to be forgotten. November 22nd, 1963 was such a day. somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic with the shocking news that President Kennedy had been shot. First reaction of all of us was one of total unbelievability. And then when it, reports kept coming through and there was a confirmation, everybody in the room was broken up. French people were sitting there crying quietly. Then people began running up and down the streets and uh, saying the president had been shot. And then the uh, women would stand on the street, the office girls crying. I remember walking to the window cars were going through red lights and driving rather aimlessly, the whole city seemed to be in shock at that moment. And it stayed that way, all that day and the next. It's been 10 years since that shocking day in Dallas, Texas, when a young president was murdered. On location, under tight security and shrouded in mystery, a controversial film is before the cameras. The film, Executive Action, a film that deals bluntly with the unanswered questions surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. What about the Secret Service? The, less than the man responsible for bringing this controversial story to the screen, executive producer Edward Lewis, whose films include Seven Days in May, Iceman Cometh, Lonely Are the Brave. that a, a story for the screen was brought to me that dealt with the conspiracy theory of the assassination of President Kennedy. The material was enormously provocative and needed, the, for me, only one thing, the work of a highly professional a screenwriter. I went to the man that I considered to be the dean, Dalton Trumbo. I told Eddie that I didn't believe in conspiracies by and large, that I doubted the president was killed by a conspiracy, in Dallas, but I'd read the material and make up my mind. I read the material. Part of it, pitch was factual. Became interested in those factual parts. Then I read the Warren Report. Then I expanded my research to perhaps a dozen other books, and including films of the event itself. And about five weeks later, I told Eddie that I was convinced that the president had been killed by bullets from at least two different angles. The next essential ingredient uh, to the film was the uh, selection of the director. This is where you can make, I think, the biggest mistake uh, once you have the script. I discussed it carefully with uh, Dalton Trumbo. Uh, we had had once before a marvelous experience with a director on a screenplay that he wrote and that I produced. The film was Lonely or the Brave. So together we agreed our first choice was David Miller. All right. Uh, Ferguson, we start with... Will, we start with you. I can see how that can happen. I can see how that can happen. Now you even have a man will be sick of government service. That's what we pay our intelligence agencies to prevent. They'll deny a conspiracy down to the last man, lay the whole thing off on that some crazy damn fool who did it all on his own. Who's the crazy damn fool? He'll be provided. Charlie McCadden just called from El Paso. Governor Connolly has just left the president. And they made a private agreement that he will make a political pilgrimage to Texas to woo votes, probably in the fall. Well, there ought to be a better way of settling things like this. If we could find some way to discredit him, believe me, we'd have done it by now. And we came up with three ideal yeah, pieces of casting, Burt Lancaster, Robert Ryan, and Will Gear. Oh, I agree with you that the welfare of this country is worth any man's life, even the president. The first man that I contacted was Burt Lancaster because I knew him the best. 
I gave Bert the script. He read it. I thought it was an enormously effective script. But the subject matter and the possibility of saying that a conspiracy was the result of the president's death was a little shocking to me. It was something I didn't want to believe. We then arranged a meeting for him and Trumbo and myself. Dalton told him how he became converted to believing in the film, gave him the books. Bert, who's a very serious uh, actor, began then reading. And slowly, I began to develop the feeling that there was a very strong possibility on the basis of the evidence and the things that I read that Kennedy could very well have been uh, killed by a conspiracy. I brought Robert Ryan the screenplay. Well, I originally uh, bought the lone assassin theory because it's it's been American history, at least as far as we know. Booth was part of a conspiracy, but they were all halfwits and drunkards, and he was an actor. So we accepted as one man. But when I read the script, the, the machinery of the conspiracy was so convincing that I began to change my mind. I don't mean I have the answer, but the script itself made me want to do the picture. Parkland Hospital. The mechanics of making the film were considerable. You'll see the sign when we take the... Uh, when, uh, when Boswell goes in, you'll see the sign pop in the house, but the beginning of the sign where the president is now in the hospital, the Parkland. same sign. It's there. Okay. Get out, because we have to zoom back and in our call act. It is, right. after all, I think, well, a new kind of film because it is a blending of fiction with fact. We had to find a way of being real but being dramatic. The big problems came in finding doubles for Oswald and for Ruby, for example, because it was necessary to have scenes including them, scenes that actually occurred that are evidenced in the Warren Commission report. But careful examination of the Warren Commission report reveals conflicting and unanswered questions. Example, why did the motorcade deliberately detour to bring the president's car in front of the Dallas School Book Depository? Here's the depository. In order for the motorcade to pass it, they'd have to make a jog right on Houston Street and left on Elm here, and then through the underpass to Stemmons Freeway. Isn't that a long way around to nowhere? It's the perfect place for triangulated gunfire. A man in the records building here, another man in the depository, a third man here on the grassy knoll where he has excellent cover. They'll have to slow down to 10 to 12 miles an hour to make this turn off. And when they've reached this point, they've walked right into the trap. Fire. I got three hits on target. One hit on dummy number two will miss. Let's try it again. Everyone involved in the making of executive action, including producers Dan Bessie and Gary Horowitz, worked intensively, hinging every important element of the fictional plot on the actual facts so that a complete story of those events is revealed. And it's perfectly logical, perfectly reasonable, and uh, I think to many people when they see the film, or for many people when they see the film, it will answer questions that have probably always been on their mind. To me, this is exceedingly important, much more important than any picture I've done in the last uh, 10 years. The timing of the picture with the Watergate situation will have a great deal to do with its seeming authenticity and possibility. And so I think it certainly bears scrutiny. I think a picture like this should be done and set up for people and let them, let them think about it. For two years, all of us that were involved in the making of executive action were repeatedly warned, drop the project, don't make it, your career will be ruined, uh, terrible things will happen to you, no one will believe you, and there will be no audience for the film. In light of today's headlines and events, I believe more than ever this is a film that has to be seen. Mm -hmm.